Hey guys, it's Lisa and welcome to my channel. Today we're going to be making over this side table and also a couple of thrifted frames. We're going to turn them into art. So I started out by putting a coat of uh, polyurethane on this and the reason that I did this is because of this color of stain. I, I never have good luck with uh, any stain that has a reddish tint to it and I also had to lightly sand the top of this because it was such a shiny finish so I knew that I was going to be dealing with some bleed through color so I just went ahead and uh, gave the top a couple of coats of polyurethane and then uh, on on the rest of it I just did one coat and I started here with the colored drop cloth in Dixie Belle and uh, as I always say I'm not sponsored but um, I decided after I, I put a coat of this drop cloth on that I wanted to go a little bit richer with the color. And the reason that I did is because I want to, I was going to distress with the lighter, um, but I decided not to distress it. And I decided to use uh, my white wax on this instead. So I needed a little bit richer color so that that white wax would show up. So, uh, on the second coat, uh, I ended up uh, putting the color sandbar. And that was just dark enough without being too dark. And I was really happy with the color in the end. And I don't show it, but I do paint the underneath of these two um, sides because uh, you see that somewhat from when it's down. I didn't mention that I taped down the side of these drawers to give it a cleaner edge. And now I'm adding this white wax. And as you can see, it really settles down into those drawer pulls. And uh, also settles into the little, um, the little indentions on the um, uh, turned legs. A lot of times I'll do some color on these small tables like this. But uh, the vignette that I'm working on, I wanted to keep it neutral. So uh, that's why I decided on this. And also I'm not going to be adding any uh, decorative stamping to this. It's really important with chalk paint. Even if you don't like the look that this wax gives. Um, it's really important that you seal your chalk paint with something. So if you don't like the, the, this white wax, use a clear wax or even a polyurethane but it, it definitely needs to be sealed. And then that's all we're gonna do to this table. and It'll be finished, except that we are gonna add our little scripture to this drawer. And uh, this one's from Isaiah telling us to fear not, for God is with us. And I think uh, today especially, we all need to hear that. And I feel like when somebody buys this piece of furniture, That'll just be an extra treat when they open that drawer and maybe, uh, maybe they'll read it at a time when they really needed it. frames that I thrifted and I like this one because it has a lot of flat sp space that I can work with with decoupage and embellishments what I don't like is these crazy colors that are on here and if, if you love a lot of color I'm sorry it's just not for me so I'm going to be painting this a neutral color I'm using the color drop cloth and Dixie Belle and um 
and just giving it one coat of the drop cloth and it actually is covering this pretty well i i didn't think that it would cover this uh, this color as well as it did but um there is some texture because uh I, I think that this paint was more of a textured paint but i'm not going to worry with that because uh, i'm going to be doing some decoupaging not only decoupaging but layering the decoupage so uh, it's going to uh, hide any of the texture that is showing. And now I'm just kind of ripping uh, my uh, tissue wrap. Uh, and, and I got this tissue wrap. It's got just a light, very light, faint script. And I got this at Hobby Lobby uh, probably about a year ago. But I think that they still have it. Uh, but I'm just decoupaging it on and, uh, and I'm going to wait on to cut that inside until this dries well. And then I'll just take an X-Acto knife and just cut that out. And then, uh, w once I let it dry, then I'll sand that edge to neaten it up. So like I said, I just, uh, Mod Podge this on with, uh, or decoupage this on with Mod Podge. And now that it's good and dry, I just kind of went over the whole thing with some sandpaper just to uh, neaten it up and also do a little bit of distressing. Uh, now I'm just kind of placing my molds that I've made the night before so that they'll be dry. Um, I didn't want to take the time in this video to, um, to make these molds. So what I'm going to do is attach... Uh, the video where I do clay molds more in detail. So I'll attach that in the description. So if you're, if you don't know how to do these molds, uh, I go more in detail on how to do them. But I'm just kind of placing them right now because I'm not going to glue them down yet. I just want some idea of where I'm going to have them so that um, I have a better idea of where I want my stamping and then uh, the layered decoupage. Um, so I just kind of ink up the corner of this stamp. And this is by far my most used stamp that I own and it's called Kindest Regards by IOD. And it's great for backgrounds. And, um, and I, I really like to use it to just kind of fade from one corner out. Uh, and I like to use it on furniture. But it's just, I don't know how, how many times I've used this stamp. And then I'm going to take my little molds and I'm going to give them a coat of the drop cloth that I put on the frame. And um, I just give it one coat and then, uh, and then let it dry. And while that's drying, then I'm going to do some more layering with the decoupage. So I just tear off a corner here of this uh, old sheet music. I like to keep um, sheet music on hand because it's great for decoupage. But um, I just tear a corner off. I don't like to cut any of this because I, I like that organic look. And um, because I want this to kind of stand out and I have some black stamping on my frame, I'm just using my, my stamp pad to just kind of very lightly brush the edges of this to kind of distress the edges. And what I didn't show uh, here is that I put a little rose stamp there on the side. I don't know what I did with that footage, but it just kind of disappeared. So I, all I did there is, is um, stamp a little rose on the side. And now I've taken a page from just an old book and just ripped a little narrow um, area of it. And I'm just going to place that on the top. And again, I'm going to take that uh, stamp pad and just kind of brush over the edges of, of the um, music. And I, I literally only let this dry for maybe three or four minutes before I decoupaged it on. And this stays on ink, and I'm not sponsored by anyone, but this stays on ink 
really is named right because it does stay on. And I've tried this with some of the cheaper stamp pads and, and you get some, uh, some fading and smearing of your color, but these, I really do like this stays on ink. So I just decoupage these pieces on with some Mod Podge and um, then let those dry. And then when my um, molds are dry, then I take some clear wax and uh, just brush over the top of these. And I plan on using some black wax on them. Uh, but I didn't want to take that black wax directly onto this paint because if I did that, then uh, it would just, the black would just completely take over. And I, I wanted quite a bit of black, but not so much that it just looked like the mold was black. Because really what I'm trying to do is just kind of bring out some dimension and give it more of an antique look. And I do that with all these molds, and then uh, and then they'll be ready to glue on. And what I like to use to glue these on is the Tight Bond Thick and Quick. Uh, I've used a lot of different kinds, and I like a lot of them, but uh, this one is just my favorite. I, I tend to use it more than any, and I'm just gluing these molds in place. And then I'm going to take that ink pad that I use to distress um, around my um, decoupage pieces and I'm going to take that same uh, I'm going to do that same thing around the edges and in the center around the framed area and I'm not going to use this for art I'm not going to put any kind of art inside this uh, I'm just going to let this one be a picture frame so uh, I just replaced the back and, and put, the, put a picture in there and that's all that this will, will need. We're going to move on to uh, the next frame and this was kind of a creamy white and it had a little dimension already but I wanted to put this sandbar on here because uh, I glued that little bunny mold on the bottom and I didn't show that but I glued that little bunny mold on the bottom and uh, and I did this when it was still um, when the mold was still wet uh, because there's a curve to this and it's just really hard to glue um, these molds onto a curved surface unless you uh, glue them on wet. And I really thought that this sandbar would look pretty with this little bunny. And um, so then once that dried, then I applied a coat of white wax and wiped that off and that's all that the frame is going to need and um, I didn't bother with um, with trimming out or with taping off my glass because I'm going to be covering that up anyway and uh, so I just took some um, tea towel that had been coffee stained and covered that um, glass up and now I'm just going to decoupage just a, this little bunny from this napkin uh, onto the bottom of this little picture frame. And yes, you can decoupage onto fabric. Uh, but the best thing to do is try to keep uh, your, your decoupage mostly on the image and not so much on your... Um, on the rest of the cloth unless you plan on going over the entire entire area and now I'm just taking a little piece of tea towel that hasn't been uh, coffee stained and just kind of I've ripped a little strip and because I'm cutting this edge here I'm just going to kind of take my fingernails and just kind of fray that edge and uh, and then and then um, 
it'll match the other frayed edges. And then I'm just going to take my little stamps uh, that, and I got my little uh, stamps from Hobby Lobby years ago. And uh, I just use those to stamp the word spring and glue that to the top. And then this little frame will be finished. And I put spring on there instead of anything about Easter because to me, bunnies say spring, not just Easter. And Easter is behind us, but I think this still makes a cute little piece of spring decor. And what I used to glue that cloth on with is just some hot glue. And I just love that little bunny mold on the bottom there. That's also something that I use a lot. And I forgot to mention that I do stamp this little piece of greenery here on the bottom just to add to that corner. And then this little piece is finished. And then I decided to add one more frame. And uh, this was one that I had already painted and added some um, molds to and put some cloth in. And now I'm just adding this uh, this stamp by redesign. It's part of the Icy Paris set. And now I'm making some shabby roses to go on this. And I'm just doing this really quick uh, because I'm gonna also link um, the video where I do these shabby ro roses more in detail in the description along with the clay mold video. And I just do several of these up ahead and then uh, I'm going to be gluing them to, uh, the, to the cloth inside the frame. So I decide here that I want to put three roses on opposite corners and I'm just gluing that on with hot glue and, um, and I think that that's all this little frame will need. I'm sure you've noticed in this video that um, I'm doing this one a little differently because I had some people uh, complain that I'm not showing my end product enough, long enough, and I agree with that 100%, and so I'm going to try to do better at showing the end result. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you have a great evening, and I hope to see you in the next video. God bless you and your family.